uh, we go for the songs. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we give you thanks to give you glory, God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified, God. Lord, you say we're two or three other that you are with us, God. Lord, we pray that you bless today morning, God, the session we're going to have today, God. We glorify your name, we glorify your magnificent God, we glorify your holiness, God. Father, we pray for the church, we pray for everyone, we pray for family, we pray for everyone who are going through challenges, God. Lord, we pray for Pastor Jay as he goes to Bolton, God, and preach the message, God. Bless him, God. Give him more insight, give him more knowledge, God. Lord, we also pray for ourselves who are here, God, that you bless us, God. Father, we give you thanks, we give you glory, God. Father, we pray for those who are going through challenges, God. Those who are in hospital, God. Those are in, in, in places where there's war, God. Those are in places where they have no hope, Lord, but the only hope is you, God. Father, we give you thanks, we give you glory, God. We live today's day in your name, God. Father, hear your prayer. Hear your cry. Father, do not let us go, God. We glorify your name, we glorify your holiness. In the Lord's name of Jesus Christ, we all say, Amen. 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 We're going with the first song, Hosanna.
who will bring grace, who will bring knowledge of you, who will bring intimacy, who will grow in you, Father, and your will be done in our lives in fullness and completion. Father, your plans and your purpose will also be established in the name of Jesus. Father, service is blessed. Each and every one of us is edified in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. Father, Father we commit to others into your hands. We commit this church into your hands. Father, we say that you let your will be done in us and through us. Let your gospel shine forth through us. Let men be drawn to your light in the name of Jesus. Father, you've called us the light of the world. You've called us the salt of the earth. We will shine like lights and we will be salt for this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we will preach the gospel with boldness, with wisdom. Father, we will manifest your power and your spirit in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, your word for our life, your calling for our lives will be manifested in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, Father, we lift up our hands, lift up our voice to you today. Father, in prayer, in supplication, and also in thanksgiving. Father, we commit our, our activities into your hands, commit our deep thoughts into your hands today in the name of Jesus. Ragu Baya Rago Shata Bakande, Zika Baya Rago Shava Handa, Ragu Baya Rago Shata Bakande, Zipo Baya Rago Shata Bakanda, Raga Baba Baba, Rago Shata Bakanda, Zipo Baya Rago Shata Bakande, Raga Baba Baba Baba, Rago Shata Bakanda, Zipo Baya Rago Shata Bakanda, O will bring knowledge, I will bring grace. We are blessed in our bodies and in our spirit, but I will commit. We come against every form of attack of the devil. But I will say, sickness has no place in this body. Sickness has no place in this community. In the name of Jesus, we walk in divine health. We walk in divine wisdom. In our place of work, we are blessed. In our offices, we are blessed. In our school, we are blessed. We excel by your spirit and by your grace. In the name of Jesus. Ziba Kayara go shut up a handa, Raka Baba Baba, Raka Baba Yara go shut up a handa, Raka Baba Baba Baba, we move from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from wisdom to wisdom. We are provided for, there is no lack, for you said you are our shepherd, so we will not lack any good thing. We walk in abundance, we walk in victory, we function in good health, in wealth, in satisfaction. Your joy and your peace envelops our hearts and our minds. In the name of Jesus, there is no depression, there is no sadness, there is no fear. We are walk in faith and in confidence by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Rago Baya Rago Shata Mahanda, Ziba Kaya Rago Shata Mahande, Raga Baba Baya Rago Shata Mahanda. Oh, thank you for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for the abundance of grace. There is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. For your world sin, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We walk in holiness, we walk in righteousness by your spirit, by your grace. Oh, we stand firmly in your word. We stand firmly in your confidence. We stand firmly by your righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, thank you. Our families are blessed. In the name of Jesus, our minds are blessed. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we come against everything that rests against the knowledge of Christ. We pull down every knowledge that is contrary. We pull down everything that is contrary to you. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we are blessed. We declare that we are victorious. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Gary. Um, now we just like everyone to welcome each other. Uh, we are practicing social distancing, so if you can just be and just say hi to everyone around. And for uh, our viewers online, also want to welcome you for joining us. We apologize because the link that was sent out before uh, has been disconnected. So if you go to our YouTube page, you will see us live, so you can. You see a link that says live, so you can watch from there. So just to appreciate everybody for coming to church and to um, appreciate our viewers online too. Um, Pastor is on an assignment in Bolton, so he also sends his greetings to everyone. Just a couple of announcements. 
I was doing my book study, we are still on break this week. We're going to be resuming next week uh, on the 21st by 7 pm. Um, I'm sure Pastor will send out messages about what the topic um, will be. Um, we are open and praying that we we'll see everybody there. Um, for our offering, um, like Pastor always says, you are not under any obligation to give if you are not a member of the church. But we do encourage um, anyone that wants to support God's kingdom to give um, our details and display there for people that are in the church. Also, because of the regulations, um, we've been asking people to transfer their offerings. We are not taking um, cash currently at church. So if you want to send your offering, you can use the um, account number to send your offering. And um, yeah, so that brings us to the end of our announcement. And we'll be going into what we'll be doing today. Today is a bit different. Um, we are trying to have like a participative service today where we can encourage people to. It's more or less like a discussion today. So, um, talking about pursuing excellence, also trying to get perspectives from the congregation. So, it's more or less like um, talking ourselves through what we can do to pursue excellence in our everyday life and also to pursue kingdom excellence. How do we balance uh, being excellent in life and everything we are doing and also the kingdom of God? Um, I feel the topic is quite interesting. That's why we've decided that today we'll make it participative so that I will also encourage our viewers online to leave comments, um, to also we encourage everybody to participate. We'll be going through the comments also to acknowledge what everyone is saying. And uh, yeah, so just before we begin, I'd just like to say a word of prayer and then we'll go, we'll go into it. I only Father, we thank you for today. Uh, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your presence this morning. We thank you most importantly for the gift of life. We thank you for your children that are here. We thank you for those that are online. And we thank you for your son you have sent on an assignment to another church. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that coming to church today and fellowshiping at your presence will be rewarding because we will all learn um, at your feet. We will grow and develop the kingdom and your name will forever be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, so like I said, we'll be looking at pursuing excellence and I encourage everybody to participate. Um, Jackson is going to be coming also from time to time just to say um, one or two things. So before we go, I don't know if anybody has an idea of what the word excellence means. Excellence. I think that's a good way to start. Excellence. Going beyond average. Going beyond average. Thank you. Something nearing perfection. Something nearing perfection. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, being super and excellent. Thank you. That probably, that's coming from Jemima. Um, we've all given very very good definition of excellence. Um, I think one of the things we'll be learning today about excellence and how we'll be looking at excellence is the fact that we can be super, like Jemima said, in our everyday life. We can um, go beyond and try to be perfect in our careers and our studies, even in maintaining our family, in our relationships, we can also go and become superb and try to exceed expectations. But as it relates to the kingdom of God, you know, how do we do all this and also try to ensure all this world of technology we use, how do we also ensure this in God's kingdom? And that's what we're we are here to look at it. So we'll look at it, there are two parts to you. Look at it. What, the, what does the Bible say about excellence? Then the practicality of it. So just like everyone said, um, I'm sure if we do a dictionary search of the word excellence, a lot of phrases and technologies will come up. And we just decided to pick this just to look at it. 
And he says that it means that you strive to be the best you can by doing the best you can do. Somebody also already mentioned that, that you know, trying to be the best in the way you are doing. Uh, coincidentally, the world has come up again. It also says that you seek to do things well to make a positive difference in your own life and in the life of others. The quality of being outstanding and being extremely good. Now, some words have been highlighted from this definition. You know, it says strive, which implies that being excellent is not a walk in the park. It means you have to try, you have to make an attempt, you have to make conscious effort to try or to attempt to be excellent. And that's why the word has been highlighted. Because if you look at if you do a dictionary search of strive, you see what it means. You know, it means to, to, to attempt. Then we see the word best there also. So it means that you know in everything you are doing to be the best, you have to make conscious effort to attain that position. And the word came up two times in defining excellence. Now, apart from that, it says positive difference. That's a very powerful word. Positive difference in the sense that, you know, wherever you find yourself, you are trying to be different. In a positive way, you are trying to impact on other people. You are trying to be um, a picture that people see and they want to imitate. That, oh, this person's life, what this person is doing is different. We like this person's courage. We like the way this person is conducting their activities. You know, so positive difference. Then it says in your life. So when you look at excellence, it implies that apart from achieving all these things in your life, it also talks about the life of others. So that means that you are trying to attain this faith in your own life and you are also trying to make this impact on other people's lives. For us to see the, you know, how important it is. Then it says the quality of being outstanding and extremely good. Now, all these phrases and terminologies and this whole sentence is defining one thing, and that is excellent. To say that it encompasses all these things. So that is why I said earlier that this topic is quite important. And uh, so if we look at excellence as a whole, and it means all these things. How do we pursue excellence? How do we attain excellence? Um, it might seem as if some of us might feel that, you know, we've, we know how to do it or we've even been doing it. And that's why I said it's a big perspective because it would be nice for us to also share perspectives with each other. How do you think you've been attaining excellence? In what area? How do you go? But I think if I, before I proceed, we should challenge ourselves that way and hear from ourselves. How do you think You've been pursuing excellence. Do you think that this definition, all these words, all these technologies, do you think it resonates with you? Um, or is it, just, is it just one of the technologies, or is it all encompassing if you think about your life? So I would like us to do like a candid self evaluation of ourselves, and this also applies to our viewers online, to do a candid self evaluation and, you know, say that, okay, so what have I been? How am I going about it? So I'll just wait to hear from one or two people before we proceed. I'll, I'll give you like a minute to, <laughs> to think about it. Uh, let me say something. Um, personally, I have very high expectations of myself. But the problem is that I really need it. So how I thought what an excellent career looks like. Excellent career is academics in this workplace. I know what I'll be doing. So the idea of excellence is not, it's not foreign to me. But what's foreign is my, is my striving to do it. So I know that there's, there seems to be work and um, kind of an exertion of like efforts to attain that excellence. So in the future sense, doing the best you can possibly do. And that sometimes is not, it's not very easy. The laziness is like a, <laughs> it can be a plague sometimes. So being, doing the best always, Sometimes it seems almost impossible for me. <laughs> but I'm doing the best in academics, everything. I'm doing the best at work. I'm 
it was something really great. The, the, the effect, the end result would be fantastic, but the process of doing it is easier said than done. So, so that's just, that just it. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was really powerful. You know, the, the part that clicked with me was when you said you have a picture of what the excellence you should be. And it's the process of attaining that excellence to you that seems a bit challenging. So thank you for that, Brother Gary. You know, and I, I didn't even think about that before that like you could have a picture of what an excellent you should look like and uh, struggle with the journey you know, to attain. And like I said, you know, that's why our word um, striving um, came into play to say that. Okay, so thank you for that, Gary. You know, and that's why we are here today also to look at all these things. Um, so let's look at what the Bible says. We'll delve into what the Bible says about it, and then we'll address some other aspects later. In the Bible, we can see that God calls us to excellence. I mean, God Himself is the epitome of excellence. We would see in the Bible that, you know, when he said in Psalm, when Jesus came, Christ came to earth, he did a whole lot of things. And the Bible never said that he was not excellent in everything he was doing. So, how did he do everything? He healed the sick, he went to church, he participated in Bible study. Uh, he argued with philosophers, you know, so he was intellectual, he did some research. So he was all encompassing. So, you know, the Bible says that looking at the life of God, he does nothing short of excellence himself. Therefore, we should always be striving to be excellent too. Being excellent in what we do will point back to the one who gave us the ability to do our work. We all know that we are created in God's image. If God is the epitome of excellence, it is only fair for us to have this characteristic future. I would be wondering why he didn't just give it to us automatically. You know, immediately created or just put excellence in us. He gave us the ability, but you know, at the same time, he wants us to, uh, it's a process, he wants us to go through that process to attain um, excellence. Um, I don't know what's going on my screen. Sorry. I, I tried to fix the stream in because it cut off. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I'll just. Okay, why you do that? Let me. Now, if we look at the. Um, So, a few Bible passages for us to look at and what it says about excellence. If we look at Mark 7 37, the Bible, it says that an old head were completely amazed. How well he does everything they claimed. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Now, the word well in this Bible means, in this scripture, means excellence. They were amazed at how excellent Jesus Christ was. Uh, it means beautiful, you know. It means he did everything. So it means colorful. They were amazed. In 2 Corinthians 8 7, he commanded us, he said, but as you are bound in everything, in faith, in speech, in, all, in knowledge, in diligence, and in your love for us, see that you are bound in grace also. Colossians 3, 23 to 24, and whatever you do, do it actively, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the word of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, all these passages is just, you know, to paint a clear picture of why we should pursue excellence and why excellence is important. We can see from these scriptures that God commanded it. We can see that God was the typical example of excellence. He was the perfect depiction of excellence. So if God is how mighty he is, is excellent and created in his image, it is 
is only fair and necessary for us to pursue excellence. Now, if we look at, they say to put like a Bible character that we can look at and look at his life and what the Bible says about him pursuing excellence. And there is no other uh, perfect example than Daniel. The Bible even said that Daniel had an excellent spirit. The whole book of Daniel is an example of how we as Christians need to be set apart from the norms of our society. Like I said when I started, we're just looking at what the Bible says generally about excellence because before we go to the practicality of how we can attain excellence. Now, Daniel was exceptional at what he did and others took notice of that. We should be following Daniel's example and while also striving to be the best in our own industries. So Daniel, in everything he was doing, he was excellent. And his peers were looking at him, ah, ah. you know, this guy, everything he does is different. He just had that spirit in him that just, you know, that sets him apart. And it's funny because, you know, you might not even know that you're doing some of these things and people are watching. I remember there when we had the Bible study and pastor gave an example. A pastor was like, he was just in front of his uh, garden, and his neighbor called him and he was like, Oh, John, I've never heard him curse before. And pastor was like, to be honest, like he never even thought about it. He never, it was not something that crossed his mind. He didn't know that his neighbor was noticing, you know. And it's funny because we as Christians, sometimes people set traps for us. They just want to see. This guy is, is different. He's doing everything. He's different. He's utterance is different, his appearance is different, you know, so they, they, they are watching closely and you won't even know. And that was the case of Daniel. His peers were watching, they were observing, they were looking at him and they were like, ah, everything seems different about this guy. Daniel had a spirit of excellence. Another reminder from the book of Daniel is that if we are holding ourselves to kingdom standards, we will rise among others. The Bible says it clearly, using Daniel as an example, Daniel was exceptional. Why was he exceptional? Because he, was, he had an excellent spirit. So he rose among his peers. We may have similar or equal skill sets as someone else, but we employ kingdom standards. It gives us the leg up over our peers. Now, I said it before. Know, that we might think that we are excellent in our career, we might think that we are excellent in our studies or whatever we are doing. But by the time you add kingdom excellence to it, it's all encompassing. You just, you know, you just do things with, I would say, effortless ease. Because you have that kingdom excellence, you practice. But if you separate the two, there will be challenges. In fact, the word striving, you would just discover that you strive and strive and strive and strive and you might never attain that goal or you might never, you might attain it or you might not attain it to the level that you want to attain it to but by the time you add kingdom excellence to it just like Daniel did you would discover that uh, you would just abound and flourish and we'll look at some things about that as we go on Again, in Daniel 6.3, like I said before, Daniel had an excellent spirit. It is clearly stated in the Bible. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. He was exceptional. Excellence, exceptional. We looked at a lot of words today. I'm not here to teach English, but this technology is very, very, very important because it's all encompassing. Just to describe or to explain one word, excellent, we have looked at a series of terminologies today. Exceptional. Daniel was set apart. In Daniel 120, Daniel had excellent wisdom and understanding. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, 
He found Daniel ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the old world. Now the question to us is, how did he achieve all this? How did he become exceptional? How did he get excel? How did he get the excellent spirit? How did he get to this? You know, how, did, how, how, how does he do these things? Because if looking at the scriptures, it might seem as if these things are easy. You know, you just pray, you don't worship God, but we would see that in the whole process to attaining this feet. Um, before we proceed to the second part, you know, from everything we've said so far about what the Bible says, about being excellent, about Daniel's excellent spirit and everything, I would like us to do another exercise, another self, candid self evaluation of ourselves and think about it. That what sets you apart among your peers? What sets you apart among others? What makes you different? What do you think makes you different? Um, have you ever, has anybody ever told you that before? That, oh, Emmanuel, you are different. You know, you, the way you do this thing, you know, is, is exceptional. And if you've ever had that compliment before, I'd like you to think about it. So what did you do or what, what was the process that made you receive such a compliment? So I'll just try it open again. I'm also looking forward to comments from our viewers online. I hope our network is good that they can, they are, they are watching. So yeah, so. Um, I, I would really like contribution and if people are not contributing, I might start calling <laughs> names because the service is participating. Jackson, I don't know if you can get a mic so that. Yeah, yeah so you want to. Oh, was it because I used the example of the man? So the man decided to stand up to the back. Yes, so you might have to come. Yeah. Thank you. Cursing and things like that. Generally, people actually do notice. Like, I also don't curse, so like my roommates and people around me, they're like, why don't you curse? Why don't you? Just like, it's not something I do, it's just like a principle I live by. Certain things I don't do, I don't get, I don't get angry easily. And certain values like that, they tend to like mold you, mold your character and it moves the principles you live by and how you strive towards what you want, your goal. You choose your battles, you pick your fights, you pick what you want to be. Thank you. Yeah. So, for, for what would I have to say? Attributes, characters and values. Those are the things he said, sets. He believes sets you apart and makes you excellent. Thank you. So, I think our sister Dami wants to say something. Thank you. 
Thank you. Another one is talent. We can encourage them to do that. So, we've had character, we've had attributes, we've had talent. I don't know if Jay wants to say something. I think you can have uh, the talent, the character, and also I think it's hard working. So I believe that we, the kids, when they're doing their homework, you will struggle, you'll find it hard, but you keep you on going, you don't give up, don't you? So if you're finding something difficult, you're still going, you're still going, you're still going, you ask for help. I think it's hard working that also pursue excellence, because if you work hard at the end of the day, you will get good results. So for me to pursue excellent start from hard working and then you can go into the practical side, the skills and the technique for you then to get the excellency. So uh, it's like I find I find pursuit success is like someone doing ten press up, the other one, the lazy one is just doing two press up. So that's how you define excellency like you want to go beyond? You want to go extra mile? You want to go further? So, yeah, that's how I normally describe pursuing excellence. Okay, thanks, Jay. Yeah. That's, that's also that's very powerful. <laughs> yes. yeah, we've had talent, um, we've had attributes and character. And Jay just caps it with hard work. To say that you can have the talent, but without hard work, you might not attain excellence. You can have the characteristic characters and the values and the attributes without hard work, you might not attain excellence. Let's look at what the, what the Bible says. Okay. Now, this is the second part. A call to excellence. Do you give God your best? A call to an excellent Christian life. So this is where we are going into it. From generalizing, from generalizing about what excellence is to now looking at an excellent Christian life. What, 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 what the Christian life now is what we are now attaching to excellence. To say that, like I said before, you need kingdom excellence. It is not just excellence as it is, as it is in general terms. You need kingdom excellence. So. A call to an excellent Christian life. So what's the Christian life that is added on top of this excellence? Let's look at it. Now, even though the Bible commands us to be excellent, there is a tendency for us as Christians to focus on other aspects of our lives and exhibit a casual approach. Emphasis on the word casual towards God's house is work and his ministries. For example, you know, I've had people say before that, oh, I read all through the night. That was why I couldn't come to, I couldn't come to church. Now, it's funny because life would put a lot of assignments on your hand that you would be so busy and even forget about the kingdom of God because you are pursuing all those other assignments and all those other activities. And to be honest, these things never finish. These assignments never finish. As you are going into adulthood from infantry, there are always things for you to do. And you can keep on pursuing excellence in all these things and forget and just exhibit a casual approach to the kingdom of God. For example, you know, I, I used to, when I was younger then, I used to remember uh, this man that used to come. He comes to church December 31st of that year. He comes to church January 1st, then till, till December 31st again. I'm not seeing him again till December 31st. And I used to wonder then, like, huh? But then every time he comes, he comes with the latest car, the version for that year. And I was wondering, ah, this man must be busy all through the year making a lot of money, you know, because, say for example, 2021, January 1st, 2021, he will come with messing this bands of 2021, and the guy is not going to come to church again. Meanwhile, the people that have been coming to church every day don't bring that. Then I was like, hmm. and I was really young. I was doing the analysis in my head. I was like, okay, we'll see. 
Now, over the years, you know, not putting anybody down or anything like that, got to a stage where the man had a very serious challenge and he started coming to church. Coming to church often and all those things. And eventually, he, 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 he had to say that he didn't have fulfillment in his life. He was rich. He had a lot of businesses, he was always traveling, but he forgot the kingdom and he was pursuing all these things. And so, yeah, so he was excellent in all these things, but the fulfillment was not there. And he had to run back to church because he needed kingdom excellence. That he even mentioned that if all of the money and all the riches should just be taken away, and for him to now, you know, to start from the beginning, to get to know God and to get to seek God, and that will give him fulfillment than all he had before. Anyways, now most of, of us are trying out to juggle it in life and in career, like I said, work, family, self-care. We believe that in order to be the best of ourselves, we must excel in this field. Now, being the best, the word best has come up a lot. Being the best simply means surpassing a skill and achievement, the desire for excellence, the desire for excellence. And this keeps us focused and moving towards our goals. By being focused on our fields and also being outstanding, by trying to surpass the average. Now, we can do all this and forget the kingdom. I keep laying emphasis on that. And that is why this topic is crucial today because I believe that it is time for us to get back to pursuing excellence in the things that matter and what other thing can matter than the kingdom of God. We need to get our priorities in, important, priorities in order and get serious and passionate about God's work, God's way. Now, what are the ingredients? for spiritual or kingdom excellence. I'll throw this open again before we go into it. What do we think we need to be able to attain, to be able to balance it, the Christian life, excellence, excellence in our Christian life and excellence in all our activities, work, life, family, or whatever we might be. What ingredients do we need to be we might be excellent in all these things, but just to have that Christian, that excellence in Christian life to it, what do we think we need to sprinkle, to sprinkle on these things? I said discipline. 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 Can you expand shit? Um, you might need to. Mm -hmm. In sense. We will encourage you now. <laughs> um, discipline. Discipline. Yeah. Discipline. Discipline. Period of time to say for Bible studies and praying, and um, it's just fasting because fasting needs a lot of discipline. Um, so it's little things like that, being disciplined in things like that, in, things, in, this, in your speech, in things you say, in things you do, things you don't do, just discipline generally. Discipline, discipline. Thanks. Yeah. I think this particular question is one that I think I can relate to the most because combined excellence in your, your spiritual work with excellence in your academics and excellence in your workplace has really has been a very difficult thing for me. And I the question is how can we be excellent in our work with God as we shall like? On Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible said that we set our focus on the things that were not things that were So, in other words, the most important thing for spiritual excellence is setting priority. Realizing that excellence spiritually is actually the most important thing, basically, that that comes above every other form of excellence. Um, I think Jesus says, where your, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will also be. So, let your relationship with, with God be your number one treasure, let that be your one priority. And, from there, you can master the excellence in your workplace, excellence in your academics. But it's it's just that done again. Like even the story you gave some bad girl that was really sad. I can relate also because sometimes you just be filled with serious 
sadness. I realized, oh, this thing is leading to me not actually aligning with God. I'm not actually having been excellent in my work with God. So I think number one importance is um, setting your priority and making yourself realize that your work with God is comes above every other every other thing. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Yeah. So it's about putting things, first things first. If you put God first, I believe that everything else will fall into place. Um, another scripture says, what profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So it's just prioritizing and putting what's important and committing everything else to God. Because you can try and you know, get a good job, do so well in the job, do your studies so well. But if your relationship with God is amiss, you know, you might struggle, you might always struggle. There are people that are just so committed to God and they don't work so hard for education. It just comes, it's a blessing that comes from God. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. I mean, that, those answers have been very powerful and insightful. Again, you know, I like technologies a lot. Discipline and, prior and priorities. You have to discipline yourself and you have to prioritize. I like the way um, Sister Patricia Ranger talked that, you know, give everything to God and every other thing will be added to you. So let's look at what excellence requires. In order to pursue excellence, there are some things that we must have. The first thing is the spirit of excellence. It's doing something and asking the question, would God be pleased about this work? I think the, the closest way we can be conscious of excellence in our Christian life and everything we do is to always ask ourselves this question. If I do this thing, would God be happy? If I do this thing, would it glorify the name? Of God. And that was one thing that Daniel depicted. Everything he did, he ensured that he gave glory to God's name. And that was what set him apart. Because in everything, he had that consciousness, you know, that he must give glory to God. And that's why the phrase has been put here that we should challenge ourselves in our day to day activities, in everything we engage in, or we're about to engage in. We should have ourselves this question Would God? Pleased. Secondly, excellence requires seven. Um, I've found over the years with experience that one of the ways to ensure that at least the kingdom of God and the house of God is not missing you is for you to serve. Because if you don't come, people would check up on people would ask you. But they will give you assignments. And when they give you assignments, you won't have a choice but to come to, to God's house, you know, to come and do the assignment. Because we've all said we are humans and it can be overwhelming sometimes. You have a lot of tasks, you know. Um, when I came to church this morning, I was telling the guys, I said I woke up since 5 years, then had my bath around 8.30. Then I was like, let me take a short nap and prepare for church. I was supposed to be I joined by 10. Then I woke up by 10, 9.53. And I was like, you know. Then I remembered, I had this task that I was out doing in church this morning. It would have been easy for flesh to say that, ah, I'll just go next week, you know. But when we are serving in God's kingdom, and you have that assignment, and that's what I've found, and that's why I'm giving us, um, you know, if, if you play games, they will say it's cheap book. That's why I'm giving us this to say that we should all look for a way to serve in God's kingdom. How you serve determines whether or not you are ready for the next level. Serving is the passport for the next level. We can look at Mark 
it individually later to see what it says about serving in God's kingdom. Thirdly, excellence requires predetermination. Predetermination, another powerful word. You must decide in your mind, in your heart, that you want to be excellent and your Christian life also must not be lacking. Predetermination. Be predetermined that you will give everything in your life your best. The Hebrew word for excellence is majed. The word majed literally means excellence is a choice. Excellence is predetermined. After you've been predetermined that okay, I'm going to be excellent, you have to also see God's face. How am I going to go about it? And that's why I said, but how do you have that consciousness? This activity that I'm doing, this thing I'm doing, will God be pleased. You know, you must also remind yourself that God has given you the capacity to do all these things. It is only fair that you serve Him whichever way you can. And what best way to serve God other than serving in His house, in His church. Number four. Excellence requires modeling. Great leaders embody excellence and they expect excellence. What you give is what you get. Excellence makes you expect exceptional. If you look at first Corinthians 14, 40, it says, Let all things be done decently and in order. The scripture says, Let all things, not some things, everything you do. Because people are watching. We gave the example when I started. People are watching you. It's funny because you might even be um, you might even serve a mentorship as a capacity to some people and you might not even know. You know, quietly some people. There was a day at um, uni when one professor said, one student just walked up to him and said, oh, I've been looking at you for years. I just got a lecturing job. The way you prepare your materials, the way you deliver your lectures, that's exactly how I deliver my lectures, how I prepare my notes. And I was giving one month contract, and for one month contract, they asked me after a week, do you want a permanent position? And the lecturer was surprised because she never knew that this particular student was taking notes and observing. And in that way, she was serving as a mentor. Imagine if she was uh, messing up, and that was the person that this student picked to be a mentor. So, you know, excellence requires modeling. Then all in all things and not some things. Not a few things. Not a couple of things. All things. All things need to be done with excellence. Let's not produce or do anything that doesn't give him glory. I will go back to our first question. Will God be pleased if I participate in this activity? Will God be pleased if I conduct this activity this way? Excellence requires modern. Now, lastly, excellence requires prioritizing. Everyone that has come and has mentioned this. Seek God first, and every other thing will be added to you. Prioritize the work of God, prioritize the kingdom of God, prioritize the church of God, prioritize the task of God. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. So, just to recap, excellence requires the spirit of excellence. Will God be pleased with what I'm doing? Excellence requires serving. Excellence requires, excellence is a choice. It requires predetermination. Excellence requires modeling because people are watching. And excellence requires prioritizing. These are the ingredients for kingdom excellence. Now let's, let's look at the, the, the next aspect. It says, what should the Christian view of excellence look like? A Christian view of excellence. Excellence should be grounded in the character of God and it should be viewed as involving three things. Moral, vocational, and
and relation number. My people have shown this night, I was going to ask that. Okay, we had that. Yeah, okay, so since we've seen it now, moral, vocational, and relational, can anybody tell us what it means? Moral excellence. Moral excellence. I don't think I'm correct, but moral, you must be connected to your character, your behavior, your personalities. And all people say, oh, this child's got morals. It's how you conduct yourself, how you treat yourself, how you speak. Yeah, that's what I think. Thank you for that. Thank you. You know, earlier somebody mentioned characters, attributes, and all those things. This excellence of the is all in bombastic. Moral excellence. Since Martin has mentioned it means, you know, um, having discipline, you know, in your attributes, in your values, in whatever you do. Anybody else? Okay, so let's look at what it says. Oh, Jane, what is it? I was just speaking as everybody, but you're already taking it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> My spirit. It says, for example, the Bible tells us that Jesus went to the house of God, the synagogue, as was his custom. Is that your standard? Do you have it as a custom, a principle, to go to church when it's time for church? Or do you only go when it's convenient? Some people would only go to church when they feel like it. And the charge is, do you have moral excellence? Mm -hmm. And this is just an aspect of it. What's his party? Did I say this? All encompassing. So, this charge is talking about discipline. It's talking about prioritizing. It's talking about values. What are your values when it comes to the kingdom? It's talking about your personal attributes. Do you prioritize other things over the kingdom of God? And you will see what Jesus did there. He went to the house of God. That was his custom. That was, as in, he was known for that. People know that. They will always find him. When it comes to the house of God, forget. You will always find him in the church. You will always find him in the house of God. So the charge to us is, do you think you have moral excellence? If you answer it, you know, ask yourself why. I'm not going to tell you to come and tell us why if you answer it. That is your own personal, uh, personal charge. Moral excellence. Jay, do you want to ask something? Um, I think moral excellence is very important because it's how people, how you're presenting yourself. It's more like there's always how you, when you see people, it's like, oh, well, my name is so and so. It's how people view you. Like, um, I always think like the way you approach people, there's a certain character that tells this person is like this. Like, if you're a child of God, people see you, but well, it's a child of God. So, I think. Pursuing moral excellence is also very important because we live in a day and age where we want to go wild, I want to do this, I want to do that. So having the righteous moral will build the barrier for you not to make a mistake again, for you not to go through the loop. So I think, I don't know if it leads to... Yeah, it does. It does. Thanks for that. You know, it's all in my passing of what we said. Self-discipline, your values and your attributes, and your not. Let's use the word he used there. He said it was the norm for Jesus to be found in the house of God. Moving on, vocational excellence. Please hold on. <laughs> vocational, <laughs> vocational excellence. Anyone? Excellence? Yeah. yeah that means. Oh. I was going to say, um, probably with what you do. So, Moral is like your attitude, but ah, I think... Well, you are confusing this slide. There's not an attitude, I promise. Um, so it, it's to do with what you do outside of your character. So for example, workplace or your... Work, work of your hands, basically. Thank you. Anyone else? Everybody agree? Okay, so you can show us what you say. <laughs> God intends the salvation of the entire universe. Do not forget that creation has its origin and consummation in God. Our role as Christians is to be visible signs that point towards God's intention for all humanity. 
and to be instruments by which God's intention for creation is fulfilled. Now, like we said, vocational excellence has to be at your workplace, at your school, your study, and everything. But in participating and in doing all these things, are you representing God? Because the plan that God has for creation is for everybody to be saved. And you calling yourself a Christian is a representative of God in that capacity. So, if God's plan for creation is for everybody to be saved and you are a representative in that capacity, are you conducting yourself in a way that people would say, oh, I want to be saved? You know? Are you living a life that serves as an example that shines the life of God's vision, God's vision, vision of saving everybody? For humanity. So at your workplace, um, in school, um, anywhere you find yourself in your gatherings, among your peers, are you depicting God's vision for humanity? Are you living in a way that, you know, are you allowing yourself to be used? Sometimes, saving people to the kingdom, you might not even have to say anything. You might not even have to say anything. You might not even have to minister to people. Your life itself would minister to people. And that's what vocational excellence is talking about. You know? I'm sure there will be a part two to the we will pick all these things one by one and tease them apart and look at them critically. Now, the last one, relational excellence. Relational excellence. Anyone? How you relate to people? Fantastic. Relational excellence. Please let me show you. It says invest time and build the skill for strong relationship in your life. Great relationships don't just happen. They are the results of trusting God, doing the work and building the skill. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. Just as you are doing. Just as you are doing. Um, John 13.35 says that by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, it talks about love. Um, it talks about you know, investing time and effort to build strong relationships. Relating with people in a way that glorifies God. And the same pattern goes for businesses, friendships, ministry, and community. Are you obeying God's call to excellence in your relationship with others? Another candid self-evaluation for us is to think about these things. Moral excellence, vocational excellence, relational excellence. And you can even score yourself when you get home. You just have deep thoughts about these things. Do a candid self-evaluation and say, how am I doing? In terms of my moral excellence, in terms of my vocational excellence, in terms of my relational excellence, how am I doing? You know? And it still boils down to the question of everything give glory to God. Now, to wrap up, I have a short story. Yeah, a carpenter. I'll just read this out. I'm sure we can all see it. A carpenter was very good at his work. He delivered his best and dedicated his entire life to his profession and services provided to his employer. Having reached old age, he told his employer about his intention to retire from the service. The owner did not appreciate losing a dedicated carpenter. Since the carpenter had grown since the carpenter had grown old and wanted to be relieved, the owner gave him his final assignment of constructing a home. The carpenter accepted the assignment of me. I mean, he wanted to leave. He did his work without any interest for months. He didn't show enthusiasm at all. And somehow completed his final assignment. And then the carpenter went to the employer and informed him about the completion of the construction. Then the employer told him, Asked him, the carpenter, to come the next day, as that would be his final working day. The next day, the employer gave the carpenter the keys to the newly completed 
constructed home as a gift for his retirement and thanked him for his long service of dedication and excellence. The capital was short as he had not realized that the home he had made without any interest, without any enthusiasm, actually belonged to him. He regretted not maintaining enthusiasm and excellence during the construction. Had he maintained excellence towards the end of his career, he would have ended up with a better home. The moral of the story, excellence is not the act, but the habit. Guys, what question did you think the what overreaching question do you think that Capeta should have been asking himself when he was building the house? What if it was mine? Huh? What if it was mine? What if? What if it was mine? Yeah. Will it sustain? The question was this thing I'm doing. Would it be good? It really leaves us back to that question. <laughs> Excellent in everything we are doing. Challenge yourself. Even the smallest thing, this thing I'm doing will really please God. If he had thought about that question and if he had asked himself, he would have built something fantastic. But because he didn't he didn't exhibit enthusiasm, he didn't even care. He gave himself a bad gift, so to say. The challenge for us today, and I'm really good today, is to ensure that we pursue excellence not just in our activities or everything we do, but also in our Christian life. I pray that God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Uh, lastly, just something for us to reflect on. It's just like a charge to say that it is time to start doing things with excellence. And questions that we can ask ourselves, are we starting with excellence? Are we leading with excellence? Are we working with excellence? We've got to be excellent. Why don't we have the spirit of excellence? So we should ask ourselves if we feel that if the answer is no, that you have the spirit of excellence, you should have to ask yourself, why don't you have this? And why have many people lost the spirit of excellence? I believe mean, this I think it might be treated in the future also to look at why people that have the spirit of excellence lost it along the way and what happened. And um, God will give us the grace. Amen. 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 So yeah, so this brings us um, to the end. Um, I just like us to close our eyes and just reflect on everything we have discussed today. Amen. And um, like I said, just do like a candid self-evaluation. Just challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. While you also pray to God to give you the spirit of excellence to help you to always remember that everything that we have to do must give glory to Him. To ask Him to direct our path, to just ask Him to fill us with the Holy Spirit. It's funny because, you know, um, there, there, there's, there's this prayer point that I always pray that anything that I will do that will make God's face depart from my life or the life of my family, that I shouldn't find myself in that position. And I think we should also pray today that we would never do anything that would make God's face depart from us. That He would give us the grace to be excellent. And in our pursuit of excellence and the kingdom as a whole, that we will not just run, but we will run to win. He has all our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I will just ask our brother Jackson to pray this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we give you thanks to give you glory. God, thanks for the dates that you provide for us. God, Lord, for dear brother David, who prepared a wonderful, a wonderful message, a wonderful session which has been edifying us, God. A wonderful session which has helped us to understand, gain insight, God. A wonderful session which has given us more knowledge, more wisdom, God. Lord, Father, we pray that you bless him, you add more. Lord, it doesn't no stop here, God. You generate more ideas into us, God. Lord, we pray for us to pursue excellence, God, Lord, in everything we do, God. Whether we have our work, whether we have our family, whether we have our friends, whether we have our education, 
whether in every single area that we, we want to pursue excellence, God. But Lord, let no pursuing excellence deviate us away from you, God. Let no pursuing excellence draw us away from you, God. But Lord, let pursuing excellence draw us close to you. Draw us close to you to build that relationship with you, God. Everything we shall do, we shall do it with you, God. Lord, Father, we give you thanks, we give you glory. We we'll pray for Pastor Jay again, delivery message in Bolton, God. Blessing, God. Father, we pray for the Bolton Church. We pray for Pastor T.P. as well, God. Lord, we pray for everyone, God, in our church, God. We pray for our brothers and sisters here, God. Lord, we pray that you guide us, God. We also pray for people who have been following us online. Father, Lord, pray that we start with you like Alpha and we are ending with like Omega, God. Lord, forgive our sin, forgive the sin of others, God. Lord, we give you thanks, give you glory, God. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.